Hi, today we are going to do a neurological exam on a client and um, we are going to be testing um, their alertness, their level of consciousness, as well as some specific neurological tests, including the cranial nerves. Um, I just want to encourage you to open up your uh, course manual right now and go to the page in the course manual that talks about neuro so that you can see what you should be practicing for today's lab, as well as on the right side column, what exactly you'll need for the um, head to toe performance exam. And for the neuro, the only skill out of all these that you'll be doing is ass um, assessing whether or not your patient is alert and oriented um, times three to, to the person, to place, to time. Um, so that's what you'll be bringing forward for your head to toe performance exam. So let's get started with a real patient. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands, even before I go in the room. Hello. Good morning. My name is Carolyn Merriman. I'm going to be your nurse today. What is your name? My name is Lita Jones. Okay, Miss um, Lita. Um, do you want me to call you Lita or Miss Jones? Lita would be fine. I just am finishing washing my hands, and so I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Well, today. Um, Miss Jones, or Miss Lita, you told me to call you Lita. I need to do a neurological exam, and so there'll be a few questions that I need to ask you, and then we'll do some specific tests. They'll be kind of fun. Um, and so, do you have any questions before we start? No. Okay. I'm going to check your armband to make sure I've got the right person. And you said your name is what? Lita Jones. Okay. And as part of the assessment I'm going to do, one of the questions I also want to ask you is what is your uh, birth date? It is 1-1-1967. And do you know what time it is? Yes, it's uh, about 10 o'clock. Okay, and do you know where you are? Yes, I'm at ETSU. Okay, thank you very much. So that's an assessment to make me um, uh, know that you are oriented to where you are. You also are upright looking at me, so you look very alert. You're not comatose, in other words, so that's a good thing, too. All right, so what we're going to do is um, I just want to, um, I'm looking at your, your overall muscles and stuff like that, and it looks like your muscles are, none of them look droopy, or they all look pretty firm. So I need you, um, while you're sitting down, I can go ahead and do the cranial nerves. The first cranial nerve is just your, your um, smell. And usually we don't test smell specifically, but if you had vanilla or something else, can you close your eyes and just tell me if you can tell me sniff? Mm. Blueberry. What, it is. It's a blueberry marker. Excellent. Well, what I'd like you to do now is just take one finger and um, close your nose and sniff. Now do the other side. So I'm just checking for patency, and that's basically cranial nerve one. Excellent. All right, for cranial nerve two, um, I want you to be able to be able to, to read something or check your, your vision. And usually we use a Snellen chart, but we can also use um, a, a little bit of a reading. Can you read what this says, please? Test cranial nerves. Okay, can you read the smaller line? Cranial nerve one, olfactory nerve. Okay, and there's some actually smaller writing here. One cannot test small when air passages <clears throat> are concluded with up, or occluded with upper respiratory. That's perfect. So you, you've got good vision at this distance, about 12 inches. Um, so sometimes you can use a card if you don't have a Snellen chart to do that. Okay, well, the other thing that I would like to do is um, test your peripheral vision. So can you take your right hand and cover your eye? I'm going to take my left, and I want you to tell me when you see my fingers wiggling. Look straight at me. Okay, now. Okay. Now. Okay. Now. All right, and let's check trade and do the other side, please. Now. 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 So that is a test of peripheral vision. It's also known as the confrontation test. That means your optic two nerve is good. Now, another um, thing that you can do with the... Um, to test the optic nerve is to take the ophthalmoscope, which is this scope, and actually look inside your client's eye. And of course, for you all, you also can look at the red reflex. So I'm going to look for a red reflex. Okay, and I'm going to do the other eye. So I'm looking for a red reflex. Also, if you were an advanced practice nurse, you would go further in and you would actually check the back of the fundus, but that is not part of 
the exam that we're going to do today, but that would also test the optic nerve. What I'm also going to do is check your um, cranial nerves three, four, and six are kind of together, and what that test would be um, if your pupillary reflex is intact, which is the pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, directly and indirectly, and you can use your pen light, or you can use actually any light for that. And so I'm gonna use this particular one, and I'm gonna come from the side, look straight at me. I always put my hand at the nose to check for pupillary light reflex. Okay, and coming to the other side. And she has brisk um, constriction when the light is sh shown in her eyes, both directly and indirectly, and that's what I'm looking for. All right, now also the, another test of these would be you're looking for extraocular movements of the eyes. So to do that, I'm gonna have you look straight ahead, but then follow just with your eyes my finger, okay? And I'm gonna go into different positions. Okay, ready? Excellent. Perfect. I'm gonna go the other side now. Look at my finger. And while I'm doing this, I'm looking for any fasciculations or vibrations of her eye. Sometimes if you have extreme lateral vibration at the top, then that's a normal sign, a little bit of nystagmus if you at the extreme laterals, but she didn't have any. If I did see some um, issue with an eye that was not steady, then I might proceed it with a cover-uncover test. All right, um, that is cranial nerves three, four, and six. And now I'm going to do cranial nerve five, and cranial nerve five is where I had already checked with musculoskeletal, but it's the strength. There's a motor function, tighten, excellent, excellent. And then also the chin, I told you, bring, bring your chin down, good. And there, so that's the motor function. The other sensory function is that you test the person's face in three different places to make sure that they can feel soft touch, and sometimes you can also do sharp touch. So knowing that differentiation is kind of important. So t test it on your hand of your client. Okay, close your eyes. This is what soft feels like. And then this would be sharp, okay? And this would be dull, all right? So what I'm gonna do first is just do soft on your um, forehead, your cheeks, and then your chin area on each side. And you tell me when you feel it, okay? Soft. Soft. Okay, and? Soft. Okay. Soft. 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 Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is go between um, sharp and dull, and you tell me um, if it's sharp or if it's dull. Sharp, dull, dull, sharp, dull, dull, sharp. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and so your, your sense of um, uh, feeling for discriminating between soft, sharp, and dull or intact on your face, and that would be your cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. Um, we're not going to do a corneal reflex where you actually touch the cornea with a wisp of cotton. They don't think that's a very important one. Cranial nerve um, seven is also a facial nerve. Uh, I, the cranial nerve five was your trigeminal. Cran cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve. So for facial nerve, it's got um, a component where you Look, we look at the motor function um, and have you do different um, uh, things with your facial expression. Can you raise your eyebrows? Excellent. Can you close your eyes? Now I'm gonna try to open them and don't let me. Excellent strength. Okay, can you make a smile? Okay, can you make a frown? Can you blow your cheeks out? Okay, um, those are all things that you can do. Um, and then, I think there's one other I'm looking to see. Oh, show me your teeth also. You did when you smiled, that's perfect. Okay, so that is the um, motor function of the facial nerve. Um, and the other one that you could do is sensory is the sense of taste, but we're not going to do that and it usually is not done. All right, now um, cranial nerve eight is the hearing or the acoustic nerve. So what you do for that is test all overall hearing and she seems like she's been doing well with that, but you can do the whisper test. Can you close that ear please? And I'm going to whisper a two-syllable word. Baseball. Baseball. Excellent. And go on the other side. Ice cream. Ice cream. So whisper test is positive, meaning that she has gross overall hearing. If she did not, then I would refer her for more audiology testing. 
Cranial nerve 9 and 10 is called the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve, and basically what we're doing with this is that we're looking for whether or not she has um, movement in her throat when she opens up and says, ah, so um, I need to get a, another tongue blade. Cut. I didn't have my tongue right. blade. Oh, cool. shoot. <clears throat> I have only a broken one. Thank you. So clean that one up. Okay, so, of course, because I have all my equipment ready. Oh, here's one, too, that I brought. Um, okay, I don't know if I, all right. All right, so to check this particular cranial nerve, it's 9 and 10, we are going to look in your throat, okay? Look in your mouth, I mean. All right, can you say, ah? Ah. And so what I'm doing, I'm going to get my light to just make sure I can see a little bit better. All right, say, ah, again. Ah. So what I'm seeing, and when she says ah, is I'm seeing a little vibration of her uvula that's hanging down. And I could also touch her tongue, okay? And it's also the gag reflex, and I'm not going to gag you today, but you would just go a little bit further back, because you want to know as a nurse if the gag reflex is intact so that before a patient progresses in a diet or postoperatively, some of those things, okay? So that cranial nerve is intact um, when she says ah. There is a sensory nerve function also, but that's, uh, again, the taste, and we're not going to do that today. The spinal accessory nerve, I kind of did that when I did the musculoskeletal, but it's assessing the strength of her, um, her face against my hand and the other side. Excellent. It also is shrugging your shoulders. Thank you. And she, she had good resistance and strength when she did that. And then the last cranial nerve, cranial nerve 12, is the hypoglossal, which is the tongue. So you just have your client stick out your tongue, please, okay, and then just raise it up. And what you're looking at is, and then can you go side to side with it? So what you're doing is you're looking for steadiness of the tongue, and her tongue was steady when she um, had it sticking out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at a couple other specific tests. I need you to walk, if you don't mind. Okay. And let me get you covered here. All right. And what I want you to do is I'm going to have you come over here for a minute. I'm going to have to move you around here. And this is called tandem walking, and it's where you put your foot in front of your, your heel to your toe and walk along that straight line and then come back. So you're looking for steadiness in her walk. You can turn around and come back. Excellent. All right, while you're standing here, I'd also like to check, test your, your balance, and it's called the Romberg. So can you close your eyes? Put your hands out. Okay, can you turn them up? Doesn't really, either way. And what you're, I'm looking for is your steadiness. And if you're steady when I touch you a little bit. Now, if this is an elderly client, you don't want them to have a, you want their feet to be um, a little bit further apart than this. But she's got great um, um, equilibrium, so there's no problem with her cerebellum, which is uh, Romberg. You can come back over here for a second. Um, some other tests that, that I want to do is I want to test your, your fine motor and your gross motor. Um, I could have had you do a, like a hopping kind of thing, but let's do fine motor first. So I want you to take your thumb and finger and touch back and forth as fast as you can. That's kind of some fine motor. Excellent. Um, so what I would also like you to do is I'd like you to take your hands and put them on your thighs and go fast as you can back and forth. That's called rapid alternating movements. All right, excellent. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to um, close your eyes and put your hands out. You can look, look at me first, but like this. And then I want you as fast as you can to touch your finger to your nose. Can you do that with your eyes closed? Excellent. All right, now I want you to put your finger, uh, take your finger to your nose and then touch my finger, okay? All right, now I'm going to move, go slower if you want to, and I'm going to move my finger. Okay, excellent. So it's showing coordination that you're able to do that. Um, another test that's um, similar to that, but it's a lower extremity one, is that I want you to take your, your um, heel and bring it up your shin on one foot. Excellent. And do it on the other side, please. Excellent. All right. Um, what I would also like to do is just make sure that you have good sensation um, in your extremities. So what I'm going to do now is just test you in a couple places 
and you tell me whether it's sharp or dull, okay? And so, and you can also tell me if you would like to where it is. So if you'll close your eyes, okay? Okay, dull. Dull. Sharp. Okay. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Okay. Dull. Dull. Okay, you got the majority of them right. There were only twice that you thought it was um, dull when it was actually sharp. So, um, and it could have been just, it's hard to sometimes integrate that, but overall you did fine. What I'd like to do is I'd like you to, um, I'm going to, I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to move your, your toe in a position and I want you to tell me whether it's up or down, okay? Up. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with your fingers. Up. Up. The other side. Up. Okay, good. That's a sense of, of um, movement. Um, now I'd like to test just some vibratory sense. So I want you to tell me, um, I'm going to touch some places. I want you to tell me where you feel the vibration, okay? Okay. Okay. My left thumb. Okay. Excellent. So there's some vibratory sense. All right. Now what I'd like to do is um, check your tendon, deep tendon reflexes. And so the deep tendon reflex that um, is most common that people check is the knee jerk, which is um, right on your knee. But there's some other places that you can check. But let's check your knee one first. Are you relaxed? Yes. Okay, normal deep tendon reflex is two plus. All right, so relax. And what you do is you look, there's the knee, you go down and then there's a depression under the knee and you use the longer flat side for the knee. Okay, two plus I would say. Some other places that you might see people checking reflexes would be the brachioradialis, which so right, right here. So this is the brachial radialis. Then you can do the biceps here by putting your thumb at the tendon and you can actually come down on your thumb. Excellent. That's the biceps. The triceps is you have the person hang their arm, just relax your arm. Behind the elbow, there's a little depression just like you saw on the knee. And you can, there was a tiny bit there. Mm -hmm. So that is the triceps. Um, you can also do um, the Achilles and and again, that's right here behind the ankle, and um, it's not often done, but sometimes that is what you can also do, and you can feel a little bit of jerk or see a little bit of jerk, and you would want to do it on both sides um, and compare, and then, again, the normal for deep tendon reflexes would be 2+. plus. The last thing I want you to do is called the Phelan's test, and if you can put your hands like this, okay, and what I'm looking for is that that she doesn't have any um, weakness or uh, any pain there. Are you feeling any pain? Mm -mm. Okay, so that nerve endings are intact there as well. This concludes, thank you so much, this concludes the neurological exam. Do you have any questions, Lita? It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, um, and refer to your lab faculty for any questions.